So another question, what is the ego? And I do apologize, I have uh, blue hair, <laughs> blue ink on my face from dyeing my partner's hair. So when most people say the word ego, uh, and okay, when the masses say ego, the most common use of the word ego, okay, means to have a big opinion of yourself. Uh, some people use it in a positive way, some people use it in a negative way, but it's mainly, it's, it, it mainly is used to mean big-headed, you know, or, or only concerned with the self, um, having a high opinion of the self, you know. The way a psychologist uses it and the way people that are more interested in the mind and those who even have their toe into you know, touching into spirituality, understand, so, so the really basic understanding of the ego um, is that it is the personality, it is the idea or the image that one has of oneself. It is all the beliefs that one holds about oneself and the world and how they need to interact with the world. It is your memory, basically and all the belief about what that past memory means for you going forward in the future. Now, I wouldn't call that fully the ego. I would call that just the personality myself. And I make a distinction there uh, because I have an understanding of reincarnation and multiple lives. And that makes things a little more complicated because if you are Brian in one life and Mary in the next, but you carry a good bit of the karma or the programming or the beliefs, ideas and, and traumas and stuff, you carry some of that of Brian's stuff into the incarnation of Mary, then in studying the personality complex of this, of this person named Mary, we could not have a complete understanding of it without understanding the, the complexes that Brian contributed from his life. Okay, so the ego, the way I would define it myself, is anything that is temporary, anything that is false, anything that is finite, because we, again, are infinite. We are one. Source is one. Uh, I describe it like, you know, a diamond with many facets. So the source is one diamond. And all the, the, the children of God, or the Elohim, or the monads, however you want to call it, the eternal you. So there is an aspect of you, there, there is an aspect of God, I mean, of source, of infinity, which, although it is one with infinity, it is also one reflection, one particular angle and facet and expression of infinity. And that is you. You are one of those. <laughs> Mm -hmm. at, at, at the highest level okay so that is what chose to come down and incarnate and create these worlds and these experiences so what it did what you did is make a series of vehicles going into denser and denser incarnation for you to experience these worlds so the over soul is all your lives in, in all the different solar systems and galaxies on alien worlds and in different times, all of those put together, that's your oversoul and, and more than that, you know, but it is the, it is, it is experiencing all those lives. Okay. The soul is experiencing all your human lives and it is also more than that because it is standing above them just like the oversoul is directing it. So the oversoul is directing all the souls in all their worlds, in all their experiences. The soul is directing all the egos, all the personalities that it has played, all the different characters it's played in the life, in one world on earth or whatever, or at least up to this point at this stage. So as in, if you look at it from the linear perspective, from the, from the human perspective, incarnating up, 
has the egos pass in the beginning as one falls into density uh, for a certain period of lives whether that's a hundred lives or ten lives or a thousand lives generally there is an accumulation of karma so one gets more and more entangled into density into the material world into fear into selfishness into illusion into ignorance it, it is a fall and it doesn't happen in one life it happens successively life after life after life as we you know go off on a tangent so basically as that is happening every personality that lives and dies all of that information and and all the wisdom that has been learned and all the evolution and all the negative karma all the mistakes that have not been worked through yet all the misunderstandings all the angers and traumas that are being carried through life to life and, and, and including the interim period that could be a hundred years or 200 years or 50 years if we want to look at it from a linear time period scale which it, it doesn't really work that way but if we had to we, we equate it you would say that you spent more time in the in-between you know in the fourth dimension than you did in the third so life to life to life the ego is moving life to life to life each personality is experienced that's what most people would call an ego but I'm calling it just the personality while I call the larger personality that is the accumulation of all these different lives the ego okay but it's still not the soul until it gets to the point that it stops accumulating karma and starts breaking away karma once it starts to go on a spiritual path once it starts to change its trajectory once it once the personality and ego reaches up to the higher self for help and it starts to touch the soul to bridge that gap then it eventually becomes the soul that's what the whole ascension process is is the ego becoming refined and refined and refined until there's there's nothing left out of alignment until there's just the soul intelligence left until one is just unified that's soul integration and that is actually the integration of all those personalities and all these lives that you have lived on, on earth you know and then once that is complete you will go on to cosmic evolution there's multiple choices but just for an example in Sirius in you know on the Sirius system or something and you will be working at the soul level integrating into the oversoul kingdom in the same way love it love